Okay, welcome back in part two regarding Hanukkah, prophetic pointer for the tribulation period. So, let's see how we get there. Let's first talk about the tribulation period. Also, there is a lot of confusion uh, and different uh, theories, but let's simply read what the scripture says. And I cannot read everything, it will be too much, uh, but um, um, I'll try to stick with with what's important, and um, I hope you bear with me. Um, we, um, we go through a trip, as it were, through scripture, and we will puzzle together what it says there. Not by um, uh, conjecture, but um, by, by, uh, yeah, by rationale, by simply um, understanding what it says. And it will reveal to us the timeline of the tribulation period. And thus, when it starts, and if the, the rapture has to be before that, and so it will shed also light on that. And I have to say, this is not absolute science. It might turn out different. It is um, how we understand it at this point. And sometimes there is this, this ongoing revelation and uh, you learn that um, things are not exactly as you understood. Um, and, and you have to adjust uh, your understanding. That's uh, the process of learning. But this is what we should do. We should search and dig for it. It says in Proverbs uh, 3, uh, search for it as if you're digging for gold or for silver. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what it comes down to. And this is what we should do. Uh, we find so often that Christians say, ah, don't, don't think about these things. No one knows the day or the hour. This is always the the most misquoted verse in this context, uh, and so just leave it. And uh, that, is not, that is not the attitude of a bride who longs for her groom. It cannot be. Something is wrong if, if that's your attitude. So this will, at least, to say the least, will be intriguing. And uh, we follow only clues, as I said, that are in the Bible. This is what I uh, drew, do. I uh, will not go to extra biblical sources, although... They only complement this, but uh, let's stick to what it says in the Bible. Um, these clues, these prophecies were given for a purpose. They were given for a purpose, for a reason. And anyone who desires, has a healthy desire for Jesus, he, you want to explore this. Um, we will use mainly the prophecies from Daniel and from the book of Revelation. Um, and to Daniel, God said in Daniel uh, chapter 12, um, seal the book. This is for the time of the end. Uh, but to John, in the book of Revelation, God says, do not seal the book, because the time is at hand. Now, if the time was at hand uh, when um, J uh, John wrote this down, then it's even more at hand right now. So we should not seal the book. We should not close it and close our eyes to it. We should read it and explore it and try to understand it. That's what God said to Daniel. It will be for a time when knowledge will increase. That's where we are at. Daniel 12 verse 4. So, the books are open. Let's read them and try to understand. Um, and I want to go first to Daniel 9, 27, a very well-known passage, um, of course. Um, it says that, and he, talking about the beast, the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So, it speaks about a week. Now, a week is, um, in, um, in Hebrew, it's Shavua. And Shavua um, uh, comes from the root uh, of, of seven. Uh, that's what it's about. Uh, so it's a period of seven, Shavua. And a week is seven days, and therefore you can translate it as week, that's correct. But in our uh, perception, a week is seven days. 
in the word Shavua doesn't mean seven days. It means seven. Any period of seven. It can be seven times a thousand years. It can be seven years. Uh, it can be seven days. In this case, it is seven years. And I can say that with confidence because there are many texts in Daniel and in the book of Revelation uh, that clear that show that directly by saying it in different ways, not only as a week, but also as a period of uh, 2 times 1260 days uh, or as a period of 2 times 42 weeks uh, or as a, a time times and half a time, meaning a year, two years and half a year. So these are different ways to say the same thing. And using so many different ways is to make clear to us this is what is meant. Because some say yes, but these are years, but uh, um, or these are days, eh? uh, 2,520 days in total, and you have to do uh, a year for a day, so it's 2,520 years, it's a whole period of history and all this. But by saying it in these different ways, God makes clear, this is what I mean, literally. And then, of course, all kinds of indirect clues to this as well. So what he says here, there will be a week, uh, a timeline um, of a week, where in the midst, about in the middle, there will be what is called the abomination of desolation. A desecration of, uh, of the temple or the place of uh, worship and sacrifice um, and that will be caused by the Antichrist. So if I add days to this, then this is day zero and this is day 2520 and then this is 1260. Now I use these numbers because we work with biblical years. Biblical years are um, years of 360 days. These numbers are used in the Bible. Um, okay, so this is what we have. But then there is a lot more information. Let's look at Daniel 12, verse 11. There it says the following. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make a desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So it gives here a start point and a duration. The start point is the time that the, da the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. When shall the daily sacrifice be taken away? In the midst of the tribulation period. That's what we just read in Daniel 9.27. So we know the start point and we know the duration. The duration here is 2,190 days, 1,290 days. So what we can do is from this point on, we can draw, use my colors, um, 1,290 days. Now, what you see is that the second half of these, this week, of these seven years, is 1260 days. And this is a period of 1290 days. What does this mean? That there is an extra period of 30 days at the end of the tribulation period. Added. Yeah, it gives us, us this, this extra period. But then it continues in the next verse, verse 12. Blessed is he that waited and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. So he says there will be this period of 1,290 days, but the one that waits 1,335 days, this one is blessed. And so now there is a second period that is a bit longer, also starting at the midpoint, but it's the same period, but it's, it's extended, you can say. Uh, something like this, and it's a period, as we just read in um, Daniel 12, 12 uh, verse 12, uh, of 1335 days. That means that in addition to the 30 days, there is another 
45 days. So it speaks here about a time period after the tribulation. It's very interesting because we usually don't really speak about, well, we speak about the millennium, of course, but not about these specific uh, time frames. Now, we, now we can uh, find something uh, very interesting because 30 plus 45 is 75. And so in the first part of this video, I told you uh, Hanukkah is 75 days after Yom Kippur. And I told you to remember this number. It's important because it gives us a clue. And it is actually clear. So this, if, if, if we uh, apply this, this means that this end point is Yom Kippur. And 75 days later is... Hanukkah. Now that's that's interesting because if this is so, it opens a whole new uh, um, world, you can say. Um, so we are looking at when the sacrifice ends. Now there's an interesting thing about when they begin as well. And Daniel speaks also about this. Um, we know when it ends, there is desecration, and we know now also when it, the temple will be rededicated, when it will be uh, cleansed again after this abomination of desolation. So that will be very fitting at Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. So we see, we see a pattern, as we see it consistently with the, with the feasts. There is always this pattern of um, um, there are multiple fulfillments of the same um, feast throughout history. Yeah? One a very clear example that everyone knows, of course, is Pesach. It's the Exodus, uh, where they uh, killed and ate the Pesach lamb, and the blood saved the Israelites um, from the, the tenth plague in Egypt, um, this was fulfilled by Jesus, who died on Passover and whose blood saves us, us from death uh, as a wage of sin. So uh, that's an, an, a multiple fulfillment on the exact same date, on the same feast. Uh, we see this repetition here as well. So what does uh, Daniel then say about the beginning of the sacrifices? That is in Daniel in chapter 8, in verse uh, 13 and 14. Um, there uh, it says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Um, so the question is very specific. Eh? How long shall it be um, concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? That's the abomination of desolation. So in other words, how long um, for the sacrifices to, um, from the beginning of the sacrifice until, until all this is passed? Uh, the temple is clean. And the answer is in verse 14, And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then sh shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So the dedication, the cleansing, Hanukkah, uh, of this, uh, this um, um, tribulation temple, let me call it that, uh, is 2,300 uh, days after the beginning of the sacrifices. So again, we can add um, a timeline, and I will, uh, I will make this a bit. To save some space. Okay, 
So this is what we know so far. But now he says, if you go backwards from the rededication, there is 2300, 2300 days before that, the sacrifices begin. 2300 days prior to the end, the sacrifices begin. Now we know the exact duration of the um, of the uh, tribulation period, and so uh, then we also know how many days after the beginning of the tribulation period uh, the sacrifices begin, namely 295 days, which is uh, well over eight months, almost nine months plenty of time to build the temple. Um, it can be built prior to that, of course. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Now, the thing uh, is, since we know uh, the end of the tribulation to be on Yom Kippur, uh, we can also know all the other events uh, during the tribulation period. We know because of that if you count, simply count back days, then we know that the center will be Pesach. So the abomination of desolation takes place at Pesach. And that too is it's prophetically, it fits. If you look at the, um, uh, the temple service in the, in the second temple, um, it was kept until Jesus died. The veil was torn, uh, the ultimate sacrifice was brought, and that brought basically an end to the sacrifices. And of course, shortly thereafter, the temple was destroyed. Uh, the Antichrist uh, is, is not only opposing Christ, he is also in place of Christ. He's copying the, the same pattern. So the abomination of desolation brings an end to the daily sacrifices. That's what we have read, and that's what it is. And so it's only fitting that this happens also on Pesach. It also increases the, the abomination of it, and the, uh, how it appalls the Jews, and, and will make everyone see that this, this cannot be the Messiah. So counting back from that, we can also know when the sacrifices begin. And this is a very interesting um, date that will namely be on the 9th of Av. And the 9th of Av is this day where um, the, uh, the, the, the temples were destroyed, actually. And so you can imagine how the Antichrist will, will, um, will be uh, hailed because he will turn this, this doom day for the Jews into a day of celebration instead of um, remembering it as a day where the temples were destroyed now it it will become a day where the temple is restored and the sacrifices begin um, very interesting to uh, to see this and then the beginning of course it's exactly seven years prior to the end and so this is also uh, Yom Kippur there is uh, there's no other way about that uh, so it begins in Yom Kippur, it ends in Yom Kippur. That is what we get from all this. Um, that begs, of course, the question, what, uh, what happens with the, um, uh, with the rapture? Is it pre-tribulation? And so it has to happen prior to that. When? Now, the tribulation period does not necessarily begin when the rapture takes place. It begins when the covenant with many is, is enforced. That's what um, Daniel 9.27 tells us. So um, the rapture can be prior to that, and it actually makes sense that it happens prior to that, because the rapture will be an event that no one will miss who was left behind. Uh, it, will, it will stir up everything and possibly cause quite a, a chaos and, and uh, confusion. Uh, so the whole world will change, and there has to be an answer to that, uh, which will be part of the great delusion. Um, 
So it has to happen first, and then it's it's it, you can imagine that uh, in the aftermath of that, this peace treaty or this treaty will be uh, enforced. So how long prior to that? We actually don't know. Like that is, we don't know for sure. Um, my best guess, again, that's not uh, that's not uh, science, is that it is seven days prior to that, which will bring it to. Um, I'll write it here. To Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets, also known as Rosh Hashanah. This is my best guess. Again, it is, is not absolute science, but it can be any any time prior to that, of course. But the gap can also not be too big, I would I would suggest, because of the, the chaos that ensues and, and yeah, there have to be develops there developments there. Now, lastly, I want to zoom in a little bit on this uh, midpoint of the tribulation period. Uh, that is when the abomination of desolation takes place. Uh, as I said that this is Pesach, most likely. Um, and there are also events mentioned in the book of Revelation that happen at that time. And that makes it even more plausible that this is actually a correct uh, assessment. Namely, if this is on Pesach, which is Nisan 14... That means that um, three and a half days uh, prior to that is Nisan 10, which is Shabbat Hagadol. This is what we know as Palm Sunday. Um, it's not every day on a Sunday, every year on a Sunday, of course. Uh, but uh, this is the time frame. Three and a half days prior to the crucifixion, Jesus entered Jerusalem uh, and was uh, hailed as a king. Uh, that, by the way, was also prophesied by Daniel to the day. Um, so wouldn't it stand a reason that the Antichrist does the same three and a half days prior to the ab abomination of desolation he will enter Jerusalem and he will be hailed as a king the Messiah the one who will bring an end to all the misery that has happened in the first half of um, the tribulation period and these are the seal judgments and uh, of course the, uh, the trumpet judgments so a lot of a lot of severe misery has come upon the earth and now he is going to bring an end to that. He's going to restore the, the, the temple service and um, he will be hailed as God. On Pesach, he will not only do the abomination of desolation, but he will also kill the two witnesses. And we can read that in Revelation chapter 11, I will not read it now, but it says there uh, that these two witnesses have been prophesying for uh, 1260 days. That's the first half of the tribulation period. 1260 days, exactly, it gives the exact number of days, not 1261 days or anything like that, 1260 days. So this means that on that same day, they are killed. They are killed by the, the beast, by the Antichrist. That's what it, it tells us. So that will be part of what he does. And the people will, uh, this says, it's also written in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation, the people will be happy about that because they, they blame them for all this misery, because they have prophesied all these things and they were happening. Um, and no one could stop them. And now the Antichrist kills them. So that happens. Now we also read that their dead bodies will lay in the streets for three and a half days. So three and a half days after Pesach, where do we end? Uh, the Feast of First Fruits, the Resurrection Day. Resurrection Day, they resurrect and they are taken up to heaven. And so we see how this, this pattern fits exactly the, um, the prophetic meaning uh, of the feasts and also how they have been fulfilled in prior instances. So it's, it's really a, um, a profound uh, thing that we can derive from, um, from these prophecies. Uh, again, it's not absolute science, but um, for now I stick with this, uh, this finding. Um, so 
we don't know for sure, as I said, but um, it will happen. That's, that we do know for sure. And uh, that is uh, also what is uh, written in, in Habakkuk. In Habakkuk, um, uh, let me see, chapter 2, verse 3. There it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Appointed time is Moad. That's what is usually translated as feast. Uh, it's for an appointed time. Um, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So that is a guarantee that we have. These things will happen. And we should not close our eyes to it. We should actually be happy and look forward to them. And in the meantime, we should spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is not the gospel. This is not information that you, you need to share with non-Christians. This is uh, topping on the ice. This is pearls that we can, uh, or diamonds if you will, or gold or silver that we can enjoy uh, now that we have access to this treasure cove. Um, but it's not the gospel. So don't be too dogmatic about these things. Uh, Hanukkah uh, is a feast that is uh, celebrated uh, in winter when it's dark and cold. And in this period we celebrate the light of the world. That's what is important. And we also celebrate the rededication of our temples, our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit, as Paul calls it in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, we celebrate the rededication of this, that it is used for its purpose, uh, as God had intended. That's where the Spirit of God dwelleth. And that uh, is uh, where uh, the oil uh, must be, the Holy Spirit, and there must be plenty enough to keep it burning uh, longer than anyone would, uh, would imagine. That is what it's about. So with that, uh, I leave you and I'll, I say happy Hanukkah with all this in mind. Uh, and um, use it, Hanukkah and Christmas as an opportunity to evangelize, to share the gospel. This is our commission while we wait with full anticipation for our home calling. Amen. Amen.